another episode analysis this one is for episode 17 and i'm gonna try to make this stuff more concise because i feel like there's no need to go through the entire episode and just like yap 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 for an hour so what happens immediately we're getting chased by the white whale rem is deciding to sacrifice herself for us and subaru gets bailed out by rem again and this part is so sad man because we know what happens after this people forget rem due to what the whale did and that's the really interesting thing right Otto tells us the story about the white whale and how there was like a subjugation force before, right? There was like a subjugation force before where there was a, what's the word? A previous sword saint killed, right? The word here is that monster killed the former sword saint. I don't know who that is. Is it Reinhardt's dad? I'm assuming Wilhelm is the grandfather. I'm not really sure exactly how their family goes, but the White Whale is so strong that it killed an entire army with the former Sword Saint. But why, in this case, were Rem and the other traveling merchant dudes that presumably got killed by the Whale were not forgotten by Otto? Because as soon as, you know, Otto says this and he realizes that Subaru is fucking insane, asking to go back, he immediately forgets about Rem. And it's crazy because we were just talking about Rem. Meaning, at that point, right? At that point, Rem must have just died. During this moment where we were talking and then Oto having the realization of who was Rem, right? That's when she must have died. Now, that means that there is a different way that the whale killed, you know, the sword saint versus Rem and the merchants. That part, I don't know. Could it be some sort of magic? Could it be some sort of curse? We don't really see any bodies get killed by the whale. We just assume they're dead because they get left behind. But very interesting to really think about. This entire time of the carriage ride too, that dialogue was so interesting in Subaru lashing out to Otto, but everything he said applied to himself, right? And it, that happened later on with Amelia too, where it was all like, you know, you're so weak, you have no plans. How are you going to do this shit? It's just like... He's getting mad at himself and it's coming out as like a projection. So anytime he's like yelling in this episode, it's pretty much him like getting angry at himself. I wonder though if he even realizes that it is that, like that's what he's doing. The whale actually is super baited by Subaru. Because remember, Witch Fiend? What happens when Subaru says, I can return by death in Arc 2? All the Witch Fiend, Hellhound things and Rem, they react when Subaru does that. So again, the White Whale is a Witch Fiend. It was getting baited by Subaru and was basically following an Otto. <laughs> Realizing that and pushing Subaru out the carriage was fucked up. But I don't blame him. I would have done the exact same thing. And it's like, he's all messed up. He broke all the bones in the body. But again, just something about Otto just pushing him out of the carriage was so funny. Even Subaru punching Otto out of rage there out of the absurdity of forgetting Rem was hilarious to me. And then the Whale shows up creepy as hell look at this look from the whale man it's like looking down at us it's smiling and it didn't even kill us it's like is it an intelligent creature toying with us because at this point i think what happens when he falls off the carriage is the whale literally like blows him away right blows him away and then there's this mysterious light and a weird sound this part was really weird Really interesting, mysterious light with the weird sound. Then it's the moon. So I guess the light is more of the fog dispersing. And then the moon coming into the light. And we're safe. So what? The whale just said, you're so pathetic? The whale just thought, oh, did the whale respect Subaru maybe? I don't know. The whale despawned. You think it's a video game where the... You're like chasing, like a dragon's like chasing after you like an Elden Ring, but then you went too far and the dragon just despawns and goes back to its original position? Yeah, maybe? I don't know. But interesting that the whale stopped pursuing Subaru after they caught up and... Maybe it's like a sign of respect. Maybe he said, damn bro, you dank as fuck. Your witch's miasma is on another level. I'll let you live. See you next time. I'm not sure if that's what, you know, the whale did. Got lucky as fuck, and this dragon, land dragon, shows up just in time. This is Otto's carriage, right? You can see the witch's cult's dagger showing that Otto is dead, and Subaru gets carried off in a lucky way. And this run is so interesting because we actually made it to the mansion. So far, every time we try to get there, we were either too late, or we try to go there early, and then Betrigus fucked us up, and we got there too late. But this run, 
We just brute forced it. We brute forced it, got on the road before the fog was set by the white whale. Somehow made it out alive thanks to the help of Rem and Otto. And the kids make fun of Subaru. Kind of fucked up that, Haha, Subaru, you're so fucked up and bleeding and half dead. You're so stinky. <laughs> thanks, kids. All right, whatever. And then we wake up. And the crazy shit here is, again, it's not just Otto forgetting. Rem forgets. And it's not just, sorry, Ram forgetting. Everyone forgot. Everyone here forgot except Subaru. And it's not even just forgetting. It's like all the events of what Rem has done has been erased from this like world script, the story. How the hell does that even work? The whale is crazy. Maybe it's not specifically the whale. Maybe someone else was with the whale. But anytime the whale has seemingly killed those merchants and killed Rem, they forgot. But the source saint, again, was not forgotten, meaning maybe there's a divine protection by the source saint that prevents the forgetting of the memory or a specific magic or a way that they were killed that differentiates the two. It was so haunting, though. Actually, before we get there, Ram, I think that uh, calling Subaru out like this is exactly what he needed the entire time. Right? Rem is a sweetheart. Rem will show unconditional love and support and loyalty to Subaru no matter what, even if he doesn't deserve it. I truly believe he doesn't deserve it. It doesn't mean he can't change. A lot of people have this misconception. Like, so many people are such, like, pussies that they see us watching Subaru at his lowest and calling him cringe and a loser because he's behaving like that. And they take that and they like self-insert themselves as Subaru as if, if they want to be victimized and cry on his behalf. It's the most pathetic behavior. It's like we're watching the story in an objective way. If he's being a loser, he's being a loser. Doesn't mean he can't change. How the fuck do you expect me to just always be like, oh, good little boy, it's okay. You know, you're fucking up, but I believe you can do it. It's just like... There's some people, even in Mushoku Tensei, the whole erectile dysfunction arc, majority of the people thought it was hilarious. Yes, there's some psychological deep components that everyone can relate to it, and it's sad, but there's a lot of humorous parts. But some people are genuine such pussies that they have to like self-insert themselves as the victim of the main character that we're objectively looking at, and takes that as an absolute stance, as in like, we are forever gonna crucify them. It's like... I don't know where this behavior comes from. Again, it's not the majority. It's a very small vocal minority that I see from time to time. And I immediately ban you. Because it's like, shut the fuck up and watch the anime. Why are you acting as if you're Subaru crying? You should. Anyone here can acknowledge that what he's doing is being fucking stupid. Ram slapped Subaru with her words. And I think this is what he really needed, man. And he realizes that's harsh, but you're right, right? And then here, Rem. Who is Rem? What a shocking fucking realization that it's not just Otto. Otto was not crazy. Otto was not the white whale tamer. Otto was not gaslighting us. We are the one that's maybe crazy? That's an interesting concept, right? What if Subaru is the crazy one? Think about that for a second. What if Rem never existed? <laughs> no, this... The, <laughs> You know those, like, psychological uh, movies where a person is in a straitjacket and they're, like, in a psych ward, but they believe that they're not the one crazy? But everyone thinks that they're crazy? But they're getting fed meds and they think that, like, they're not crazy? But at the end of the movie, truly, we were not the crazy ones and everyone was gaslighting us or something? I don't know. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't know. I'm getting mind fucked thinking about this. Nah. Now we know Rem. We know what Rem has done. Everyone is crazy. These motherfuckers have forgotten Rem due to the whale. But I'm sure that we can reset this if we just regress, right? Hopefully. Rem's room, again, doesn't even exist. It's not just people forgetting about Rem. The entire existence of Rem was forgotten through her room being not furnished the same way. The maid outfit's probably not existing. Rem also in this timeline, then what? Ram in this timeline then is what? The sole daughter of the Oni clan that was born with both horns, but both horns are now cut off? Like, if we removed her bang here and opened a bang, would it only have one slit? Because, again, if you're a twin as an Oni clan, you only have one horns, right? Does that mean she has two slits here? I, I don't know, but, like, how does that all work? It's so interesting. I thought that we're going to get to Biko here. Subaru was going to open the door, and then we may see Bieko, but it's Amelia. And, man, oh man. Look at her face. Anytime you have such a shadow casted on, you know, the main heroine's face, it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. 
You get to see her and she's so worried and of course we broke another promise because again we were supposed to save the capital and to get healed up. But Subaru made it here just so that he could save Amelia before the cult gets here. And then he grabs her and he's starting to scare her and this is the wrong way to do about things but I don't blame Subaru at all for the actions he's doing. I think what we're seeing is a man, sorry he's not even a man, he's a 17 year old kid. He's at its wits end has gone through so many of these same, you know, timelines where they all ended up dying and he's lashing out, right? He's upset, frustrated at his own inaction, his lack of ability and he lashes out at Amelia because he's lashing out at himself. He's projecting again his insecurities just like how he did to Otto when talking about Rem, right? He's talking about himself, but Amelia doesn't know that! Maybe she does because she asked Subaru at the end of this conversation, why are you crying, right? This part again, master class of voice acting. Amazing voice acting from Subaru. Just pure desperation, just anger coming out. And it was actually chilling when he said, due to your inactions, your irrational planning, everyone here will die, mountains of corpses will be piled up, and this is your future. That part was like, damn, this is your future. Like, it's true though. And again, that's the fucked up part. What he's saying here, it's all true. He's right, it's gonna happen. But we can't tell her that. We can't tell her why it's gonna happen. We can't tell her how we know this. We're, she probably thinks that we're fucking crazy. Look at this. You're all talk. You can't save anyone or be saved. You'll keep acting recklessly and unreasonable. Until the corpses pile up as high as your thoughtless decisions, this is your future. He says here, oh god, this is fucking, ugh. I just heard the English dub for a second. I just heard the English dub for a second and hold up. Ugh. I thought the English dub was pretty decent, but what the fuck was this? Hold up. Let's, let's hear this for a second. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I can't play it long because obviously copyright shit. I'll play it for like a second or something just to hear his voice. Many corpses is the number of recklessness. Ugh. Japanese is way better, right? There is this like deeper tone and maybe a bit of a vocal fire. I don't know how to explain it. That Japanese voice acting just feels a lot more appropriate for this moment. Maybe it's because I heard this first for the first time in Japanese instead of English dub, but doesn't mean that the English dub is bad. It's just that the Japanese voice acting just takes it to another fucking level, man. I love this part. In, in, in part of the dialogue in today's episode, or this episode, this part was the best part for me. You can't do it, it's no use. You're all talk. You can't save any or be saved. You'll keep acting recklessly and unreasonable, right? Corpses pile up as high as your thoughtless decisions. Like, bro, he was cooking. The dialogue here was fucking amazing. And then, that is your future. <sighs> So sad. And Amelia, this entire time, is looking at Subaru probably out of concern because he's crying, right? He's crying at this moment. And Amelia says, Why? Why are you crying like you're in great pain? Because she doesn't know what kind of the pain that we went through. Because everything that we're saying is due to all the failed runs that we encounter. And again, there is something so poetic about his power of regression. Everyone forgetting his heroic acts and sacrifices in those failed runs. And his character is so ridden with pride and ego that he expects other people to recognize his efforts. And nobody remembering. And it's only him that has to go through it every fucking time. Like, something about that is just so beautiful. A character so prideful, so egotistical. That wants to be recognized. That wants other people to understand and recognize what he has done. But they never will due to his powers. It's, ugh. It's like, it's masterful, man. It's genuinely masterful. I don't even think I'm glazing either. It's like this curse, right? It's again, again, it's like this curse that I mentioned before about how because of the way that I analyze and do commentary and the reactions, I attract same level of those sweaty people that's trying to get on my like sweaty level of aura. And those same people are also the people that I sometimes detest the most. <laughs> it's this beautiful and poetic of how everything that Subaru is creates his own downfall and negative moments. 
after she sent me here and that's rem and then he changes his dialogue no after she brought me here right and then rem again man rem mentioned amelia says who's rem everyone's forgotten rem but are we the crazy one and at this point enough is enough right enough is enough if you're gonna forget rem then fuck it i'll leak everything right this is the first time where he was angry enough to not even give a fuck he's like i don't care anymore let's do it let's spoil the secret of return by death and boom this part is so interesting right satala shows up caresses <laughs> subaru's cheeks <laughs> caresses his heart <laughs> in the most erotic way just <laughs> fondling <laughs> his heart bro <laughs> this shit was so funny <laughs> because of the way the hand gestures are going but you can clearly see that satala dove loves subaru I don't understand why she loves him, though. You have never met the kid. Have you been observing him all throughout his, like, life on Earth? Like, why do you care so much about him, right? Because she gave him the regression power, and we'll go back to the theory in a bit. And, and, and the original theory that I had was... Subaru wanted to save a million no matter what, and his desire to do so when they died in the cellar in the first run caused Satella to give him the regression powers because Satella and Amelia may share some sort of connection where Satella is the half-elf witch, Emilia may not be Satala, but is integral in awakening or through like a sacrifice, a vessel, key, catalyst or something. Therefore, it's in Satala's best interest to give Subaru this power to continuously protect and keep Emilia until the day of the ordeal. Uh, that's kind of what I was going with until now. But this episode kind of made me rethink that because of a logical inconsistency. Because Satala was fine with just killing Emilia at this moment. And after Emilia died, of course, later on, what happens? Betrugu shows up and he's not upset that Emilia's dead. He's happy, meaning dead or alive, Emilia is useful in the day of the ordeal. And then you have to go back to the loot cellar again of, huh, well then why does Satala even bother giving Subaru the power regression in the first run if Elsa, who was already hired by the Witch's Cult, have secured Emilia's insignia and Emilia? Like, that's the logical inconsistency now in my theory that I do not understand. So, obviously, there's some things that's going right in terms of Amelia being integral for Awakening the Witch, but I don't know why the power is given that. That part, I don't know. And boom. There's a lot of different interpretations one can have about Amelia's death here. The most logical, intuitive one is how Satellite warned us before, right? She warned us that if you tried to leak this, he tried this in arc 2. She made us feel the fear by gripping that heart. This time she slightly caressed and teased us. But last time she gripped us saying, don't do this shit. The secret is between you and me. This time because he broke that warning, Satella was willing to kill off Amelia to prove a point. But there's also a different interpretation if you think about what kind of person Satella is. That she's an envious witch. What is she envious of? Subaru's love? Is Satala jealous or envious that Subaru is chasing after Amelia? And if so, then... Where am I going with this? No, if so, if Satala is jealous of Subaru's affection for Amelia, Satala wants to monopolize Subaru's love? And... By telling her the secret, you are then going against that wish of monopolizing the love. Because only you and I can know the secret. That's another interpretation one could have with this scene. I don't know how I feel about that because I don't understand Statala. I've never met her. I don't know why she loves Subaru. It's hard to figure out that part. But if we go in with the logical thinking of... The witch favors Subaru. The witch gives him immense witch's miasma, which is actually a valuable power in the cult. If you ignore the suffering part, right? If you ignore the suffering part, the witch gave Subaru an, an, an amazing power of being able to redo his failures, right? And the witch also makes him stronger with each run. Again, just ex exclude the mental suffering and psychology, like the, the trauma. And think about objectively what we gain after each regression. It helps us get through our problems. And the witch gives us much more miasma to work with. To the point where we can even see the unseen hand from Betrugus. So it does seem like Satala is helping. 
in a weird, twisted way. You know what I mean? It's just, I don't understand why she loves him. Because he's a prideful person? Because he's someone that is so flawed that Satella enjoys that? Does Satella observe Subaru's life back on Earth? But why would it be Subaru specific back on Earth? These are the questions I have that I cannot answer. So I can't really piece and must in much more of like a theory here. But this part, this entire section, very interesting. Serves as a warning. Serves as Satella maybe showing that don't tell other people about her lie. And that I'm willing to just kill Amelia immediately if you do that shit. And maybe that's specific to Amelia. Maybe we can utilize this in the future. Just like how Subaru realized how to use his return by death gimmick as an AoE taunt in Arc 2. Maybe we can use this to, again, kill other people in the future. Who knows? Biko has a very interesting uh, uh, lines here. First, Biko frees Puck. I suppose Bubby won't be coming out. I'm not sure why Bubby won't be, because I guess Amelia's dead. If Amelia is already dead, then the spirit that's made a contract can, can't come out, and Biko, I guess, releases Betty to return to the normal form. The, we see the original form at the end. I don't really see the difference. Puck seems more angry if you look at his face, but... The current form that Puck has at the end of today's episode is not what his regular form is when Emil is alive. And here, Biko doesn't want to see Subaru die, right? If you're gonna die, do it outside of my, like, sight. I don't want to see you die. Because Biko, I think, does enjoy Subaru. They get along fine, even though they banter a lot. And we saw Memrius know how Biko has this deep sadness that Roswell mentions and how Subaru might even help with that. Clearly, Biko loves Subaru, even if she won't, you know, acknowledge it at this current moment. And then creates this crazy-ass fucking portal to, like, send away. Now, is- where is the, uh, part about Roswell? I think over here. I think over here. Beatrice. It's like- I think that Be Beatrice says, I'm not like Roswell, right? I don't care if it would secure me a future. So, what does that mean? It means that Biko is not like Roswell because right now all these events happening, she's fine with just dying, I guess, even if it won't secure her a future. But Roswell, even though he went to the capital for a meeting, he's just conveniently gone. Remember, every one of Roswell's actions seems to be not helping Amelia at all. Roswell just says, fuck it, like this is gonna secure my future. I don't know how it does, but it sounds like everything Roswell's doing, based on what Biko says, is intentional and I just can't comprehend how this helps. I don't know. Every run is a failed run. But Roswell's like, yup, it's still okay. So I'm like, fuck it. All right, we ball. And then Biko sends us over to the portal because Biko obviously doesn't want us to die. Emilia's corpse falling on the ground here is comical. There's also something funny about like a dead body just being treated like this. Yes, it's terrible. It's horrific that Emilia's dead. But like, <laughs> her body just... <laughs> <laughs> kind of fucked up. And at this point, I immediately had the presence of mind. I had the presence of mind immediately as the cult members showed up to think from the cult's perspective. Because remember, day of the ordeal. Amelia being a sacrifice or a key, a vessel, a catalyst for the day of the ordeal to awaken Satella. They were happy. Betrigus says, wow, so diligent. Like, you literally... Did everything for us before we even made a move? You're so fucking diligent! Now, mention is half devil again, not half elf. Elf is synonymous with devil to the cult, I guess. But when the royal palace called Amelia half devil girl, there was like a stigma, obviously. Obviously, it's rude. Obviously, it's specious. And, you know, people were correcting that guy saying half devil in the court. But here, you would think that the church members, the cult members, do respect the witch, yet they still call her the devil, meaning the devil here is not like a, a, a negative word to them, right? There's no negative connotations, or rather, it has negativity, but they embrace it because they are the cult, is my understanding. How diligent you are, remember? What is Betrugus? Archbishop Sin of Sloth? Every time you're slothful, he gets 
upset and angry and for, for and ask for forgiveness, right? It's like this whole religion of like repenting for your sins. Even though he represents sloth, he tries to be diligent. But if slothful things happens, you know, he pops off and tries to correct that behavior. So we brought, you know, Amelia here dead. We're very diligent. He's very happy about it. Mm -hmm. You took the half devil's life in the ordeal's name. I still don't completely understand what this ordeal is, but my guess from the beginning of episode, I think, 14 or 15, is that it is supposed to be some sort of witch ceremony to awaken Satala. Diligent? Yes, you are. Because you brought Amelia's body here, which is their goal right now. But then, the mental gymnastics Betrigus always will do, he's so unreasonable with this, right? Even that example, when the cult member, the finger was like, dragon carrots like he was like Ryusha and then Better goes like Ryusha oh how diligent how amazing they work so hard they're so diligent and listen to people's orders they work so hard and then he rewards the fingers by saying your diligency you know uh got through to the land dragon and then it died and then it's like well hold up now that it's dead it's slothful so it's just like how the fuck is that fair and in this example he rewards Subaru for saying, you know, uh, wow, you brought her. But then he admonishes Amelia because she tripped up over the first pebble, right? Amelia's dead. A skill issue. You are slothful because of that. It's just like such a funny and an unreasonable uh, judgment on characters. He always does this. She trips over the first pebble in her path and it's over. Ah, you are truly slothful. And I think that we should have used this fucking logic on Betrigus, right? Betrigus gets upset here because we can see the unseen hand because most likely our miasma got stronger or Satala gave us another buff. Maybe Satala did something separate and this is different from our miasma getting stronger with each run. But I could totally believe that because our miasma getting stronger, we can also now see the authority of Sloth. But again, because we saw that, Betrugos got upset and he started to lash out at us. And at that point, we should have literally hit him with his own logic of, oh, you know, it's due to your sloth, your inaction, that I am now able to see your unseen hand. Aren't you truly the slothful one? If we hit him with that logic, I wonder what he would say. Would he would say like, oh, my brain trembles. You're right. I don't know. There is a lot of uh, irrational, unreasonable, logical thinking that Betrugos does and categorizing what is slothful or not, but it's still funny regardless. And this time, we saw the unseen hand. He freaks out. And for the future, at least now, we can figure out how to fight against Bet to the Goose. Last time, Rem got twisted because we couldn't see the hand, and obviously we were tied up. This time, we can actually see it, and we can become very useful. I don't know what the fuck it is with Bet to the Goose biting his fingers, though. Why does he do this? He loves biting his fingers as a form of punishment, right? Because he's like, oh, no. he's upset. Whenever he gets very upset and fidgety, I think he does this. He did this in episode 15 too. And also kind of funny how as he bites the fingers, remember, he also refers to his minions as the fingers, I think. And then boom, it is for my eyes alone, right? No others can allow to be see it. So is this basically better to saying the unseen hand? is the result of my devotion and love towards the witch. And it is something so special between me and the witch that you seeing it is like cucking me, right? This is something so sacred between me and the witch. No one else should be seeing it. He gets upset at it. It is for my eyes alone. But again, the witch loves Subaru way more than Betrugus, who's given up his entire life for it. It's kind of sad. Because like this guy, again, even in episode 15, he was so upset. He was so upset that this fucking loser faking the madness, acting like he's crying. <laughs> he wasn't. He was actually insane. But Betrugus gatekeeping is the one blessed with all the witches sent. And he just gets stronger and stronger. Yet me who worship my entire life. I can't get the same level of love, right? Betrugus is straight up getting cocked. <laughs> and then who shows up here? I thought that Amelia was going to get twisted. I thought that Amelia was going to get twisted, but nah, it's Puck, bro. Puck shows up, calls us a bunch of degenerates, us included. I think that, uh, I wonder what Puck thinks about Subaru. I would love to see a conversation in the next episode before 
potentially he kills us. I think that he probably will end this off. But next episode's gonna be Lip Man. And today, that's pretty much this analysis of today's episode. Again, the most important parts, I think, is the mechanics of the whale, of how people forget memories. Um, the projections of Subaru's insecurity onto Otto and Emilia as he realizes how pathetic and worthless he, he is and how how helpless he is. And then the witch getting mad at Subaru, I guess, for leaking the secret, maybe, or you know, saying this is like a last time warning, who knows? And being able to see the unseen end. There's so much to unpack in each Reezer episode, but I think those are the main talking points. And I will see you guys next time.